Am I the a-hole for breaking my promise and ruining my kids' relationship with their dad? I, 46 female, have two kids, 18 female and 15 male, with my ex-husband, 46 male. We got divorced over 10 years ago, after I found out he was cheating and got his mistress pregnant. I was so deeply hurt by this, and it took me a long time to put myself together again. After our divorce was finalized, he got married to his mistress, and they now have two daughters, 10 and 7. Despite him being a POS to me, he was and still a great father to our kids. And to not potentially ruin their relationship, I agreed to not tell them about the affair after he begged me to not say anything. That he would tell them when the time is right. We share 50-50 custody, though since they are older, they now decide when they go where and for how long. I have been as civil as I could with the situation for our kids' well-being and put clear boundaries in place. Like there's no way on earth I would babysit their kids after they asked me once. Two years after the divorce, I started dating a woman, 43 female, and we're now married. That's when my ex told me it felt like I never loved him, since it turns out I'm into women, even though I told him I'm bi. The kids love her. She shares some interests with both the kids, and we all do our annual Star Wars marathon on winter break. Then back in January, I started to feel like they were pulling away from us. At first, I thought it was nothing, just kids being kids. But then they started to spend less and less time with us and more with their dad. I was a bit jealous, I'll admit. But I was also getting worried because they were just not communicating with me at all. And when they did speak to me, they were just snapping at me or at my wife, rolling their eyes, etc. It was clear they were mad at us. So in mid-April, when my wife was out of the house, I sat them down and asked them what was going on and if they were okay. My daughter got really mad at me and started yelling that she was not okay because I let their dad on. That I lied to him. I hurt him and how could I be such monster to play with a good man's heart? And she stormed off to her room. I was really confused. So I asked my son, who was quiet, what her sister meant. He said her dad told him that we got divorced after I came out and that I told him marrying him was the biggest mistake of my life. He started crying and asking why would I do and say such things and that I didn't just hurt their father, but them and our family. Needless to say, I was furious. I told him to come with me. We went to his sister's room. I knocked on her door and begged her to let me in and let me say something. And she eventually opened a door. We sat on her bed and told them that what their father said was not true. She tried to argue, but I stopped her and asked her to let me talk. I asked them to think a bit and do some math regarding their sister's birthday. They didn't get it, so I asked them her birth date. They tell me, and I tell them that six months prior we were in Disneyland, having the time of our lives. They said they remember, so I asked them when did their father moved out. It was about a month after that trip. And when was their sister born? About five months after. They started to get it, and my daughter asked me if I'm implying their father cheated on me, and I said yes. She then grabbed her phone and called her aunt, ex her sister, and asked her if it was true that her dad cheated on me. She had to beg her for an answer, and her aunt finally said yes. She then called other family members to confirm. They both apologized to me and to my wife when she came home for how they have been treating us. Then went to their dads the following day and called us to ask if they could move all the things they have there to our house. Soon, I had my ex on my door yelling that I broke my promise and that I sabotaged his relationship with our kids. He didn't leave until I called the police. Our kids have since went low contact with him and his wife. They only go over there to pick up their sisters to hang out with them. My daughter disinvited them from her graduation. My son is no longer going to the boys' camping trip with his dad, uncles, and cousins. I've been getting texts and calls and voicemails from him and his family, calling me an a-hole for ruining their relationship. And I've been starting to feel guilty because he is a good dad. And I did broke my promise. My wife says he crossed the line first. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I realized them by when I started having feelings for my now wife, two years after the divorce. Prior to that, I thought I was straight. My daughter has been sulking about not seeing something that was right in front of her. She said she had no reason to question anything because her dad and I seemed okay with each other. I asked them if they wanted to go to therapy. My daughter said that she would like to start in the fall once she's in her dorm. 
My son just wants to be left alone with us for a while. Someone said I should force them to go to counseling and talk to their father. It's like you don't have teenagers. I did tell them that what happened between their father and I is between us, and they can see him if they want. They just don't want to right now. They are mad because of the line. Not the all. Your kids are old enough to have figured it out sooner or later. Your ex lied to them first to get the kids on his side. You just corrected his lie. They're old enough to know. Old enough to make their decisions about their father. Old enough to realize their father has probably lied about other things. Yep, X decided to fool around and find out. Opie not the a-hole. As a fellow single mom with an ex that cheated, I've kept my mouth shut. But if my ex ever decides to open his or blame me like the narc that he is, oh boy will that open the can of worms. You don't screw with a parent's relationship and intentionally lie. I'm so mad for you and your kids. Not a all. Respond with, I wouldn't have broken my promise if X didn't lie and tell them that we divorced due to me being bi. I care more about the relationship with my kids than my ex. He made me a villain when he was the villain. I owe them nothing, yet he tried to destroy me. Screw him. While I have told my kids I'm bi, my daughter said he told her that I say that now just for cover. And that I'm not into men at all. And that's why he said I led him on and played with his feelings. And his proof is that I've only been with women since the divorce. That's technically true, but I've only been with only one person since then. Not a hole. He was a good dad until he did what is called parental alienation, where he told your kids lies about how and why you got divorced. He is the one who broke the agreement by trying to alienate your kids from you. Parental alienation is actually a thing in family court. My wife says he crossed the line first. Your wife is right. His own family even verified to your kids that his cheating is what broke up your marriage. Block the flying monkeys and get a restraining order against your ex. It shouldn't be hard since you have at least one police report on him for harassment. Man, I don't even believe he was that good a dad before. I feel like he got to be the fun dad and his affair partner picked up the rest with the kids after the divorce. And Opie did it before the divorce. Someone who does unnecessary stuff this serious and dramatic is not someone who can really ever put their kids, or anyone, before themselves. It's easy to be a great parent when your partners are doing the bulk of the work. I'm also absolutely projecting here. An ex-husband could possibly be a good person to his own kids at least. I have never personally seen that from someone that makes big aggressive lies like this though, and I struggle to believe it's true. Next story. Am I the a-hole here? Husband just accused me of financial infidelity. Husband 33 male and I 33 female have been married for 10 years, together since college. Since starting out, we have made financial security a priority and have been able to achieve that, albeit with some good luck along the way. We both have good jobs, paying close to 200k each. Student loans were paid off within a few years. Both went to state schools with some scholarships, so didn't have a lot of debt to begin with. We live in a house I inherited from my grandmother, so no mortgage, and don't have any credit card debt. We max out our 401ks and currently have 18 months of expenses in our emergency fund and are still adding to it. Our cars are both paid off and should be good for another 5 plus years, and we don't have any credit card debt. We manage our finances in a hybrid manner joint accounts for bills and savings, and separate accounts for our fun money. We each get a pretty generous monthly allotment. The fun money is strictly for our individual expenses, hobbies, clothes, outings with friends, etc. And not for things like date nights, vacations, or larger joint purchases like household appliances and repairs which come out of our joint account. We also agree that if either of us gets any bonuses or has any side hustle income, those will go into our individual fund money account, unless the funds are needed for a larger expense such as a major home repair. In terms of the fun money, my husband is much more of a spender than I am due to expensive hobbies, in particular golf and collecting sports memorabilia, and he's also more into designer clothes. Which is fine, it's his fun money. On the other hand, my hobbies are a lot less expensive, running slash working out, reading and baking. In general, I'm more introverted, 
and a great time for me is tea with a friend at one of our homes with homemade pastries. I have also been getting back into gaming lately after setting it aside for much of the past decade while building my career. So, after realizing I had more than enough in my fun money account, I decided to overhaul my gaming setup and got myself a new PC, desk and gaming chair. Total cost about $5,000. However, upon hearing about my purchase, my husband is furious. He says he had no idea I had saved so much money and that I should have consulted him before spending $5,000. I ask what difference it made if it was my own accrued fund money and not our joint funds. And he insisted that my accumulating this amount without telling him was a form of financial infidelity. He says he lost trust in me and doesn't know what else I might be hiding. He is now demanding that I return the items I purchased and deposit most of the funds to our joint account then wants to make a new rule that fun money accounts can't accumulate more than $2,000 and that any excess goes back to the joint account. A rule that would obviously favor him as a person who spends most of his allotment each month instead of saving up for anything bigger. I feel like I'm being punished for being more of a day-to-day -day saver than spender. It wouldn't occur to me to demand to know how much my husband has in his fun money account or to try to micromanage what he spends it on. I wasn't hiding anything deliberately. He never asked about it until after I made the purchases. Still, maybe I should have been more transparent about my plans. So, am I the a-hole? Miscellaneous info. Husband and I each have our own office slash hobby room in the house, so it's not like the gaming setup was going in a space he uses. I don't usually game when my husband is home, unless he's already busy doing something else. My biggest block of gaming time is typically when he's off playing golf. Also, I run 40 to 50 miles a week, so it's not like I am generally sedentary. I can't think of a good reason why he would object to me gaming or having a nice gaming setup in my own space in the house. Not a all. This isn't a money issue, it's a control issue. Seems like you've spooked him by showing you can quietly amass funds out of sight. You are making a good income and have few expenses, so 5k should not be that big a deal regardless of the circumstance. The only reason it is, is because your spouse thinks he should have a say in your spending. Read Freedom. I'm not saying this is abusive behavior. It could be something else, but this is a thing abusers do. Better to nip it in the bud. Do not agree to the new 2K limit. Push back. The only reason it is, is because your spouse thinks he should have a say in your spending. Read Freedom. Bingo. Came here to find this. OP, money generally means freedom freedom to do as you wish. Your husband finding out how you can save such a large amount of money very likely frightens him. He now has verifiable proof that he's been denying to himself, mind you, that you don't need him. If you want to say, all right, I'm out. Get out of my house, my grandmother left me. He can't say no to that. Opie's got a hand here and her controlling husband doesn't like it. The fact she has the house should have been enough for him to realize she doesn't need him. My money would have been on, he cannot manage his money without guidance, and is jealous that his wife can afford nice things that he can't. It's funny that he's accusing you of financial infidelity, when he is trying to manipulate you into handing over money you saved. This is a naked money grab, not a hole. Yes, it does feel like he is trying to change the rules, and make me feel guilty about not spending all my extra money right away. Honestly, this is one of the main reasons I thought separate discretionary accounts was a good idea. Ironically, I thought it would prevent arguments like this about what we should be spending or saving. Last story. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife petty for not letting me back in the delivery room? So for three generations of our family, we have had somebody carry on the name of my great-grandfather. However, despite the fact my dad, uncle, and aunts having three boys and two girls between them all, so far, all of us have either been suffering with fertility issues or have only had daughters. Don't get me wrong, my wife and I already have a daughter and I love her very much. However, given that the other relatives are either planning to adopt daughters from parents who could not raise them, committing to being child-free or saying they are happy with three girls they have, I felt a lot of pressure on me to be the one that has a son. So much pressure that when we found out my wife was carrying twins, we saw it as a blessing from my higher spirit. 
However, given our finances, I'm a firefighter and my wife is a CNA for a nursing home, the one child and done would have been better for us. We contemplated stopping, but my great uncle, who is obsessed about how many kids people have, was all like, well, Nelson Peltz had 10 kids. More kids make you find ways of making more money. And other relatives chiming in saying people with more kids make more money. We were so nervous about the gender that we did not want to know until birth. But that did not stop relatives from coming in, with a bunch of old wives' tales saying based on my wife's symptoms that the babies were the same gender for sure. So flash forward to the day of the birth. The first baby was born Sunday at 11.20 a.m. I hear the baby crying and then silence from the previously chatty relatives. Finally, somebody, I forgot who, tell me it's a healthy girl and I should be proud. I was so upset because of the relatives put in my mind that if the first one was a girl, the second one would be two. And I hate to say it, but I was having stress over adding twins to the house. I made excuses and walked out went out to the car and cried, and then drove to the nearby cafe to get a coffee to calm myself down. But before I got there, I got a call from my mom saying I had a son. I turned around the car and sped back to the hospital. However, when I got to my wife's room, a nurse came out and said in a rather smug tone, Sir, your wife is asking that you not be admitted inside. I tried to tell her that I wanted to be with my wife, but she gave me a you don't scare me to hype eye roll. My wife banned me from her room for the next day, and finally this morning she said I could hold my twins. She pointedly made me acknowledge our daughter first, as if a baby understands English, and then let me hold my son. I could not stand it anymore and told her that throwing a grouchy nurse on me and then what she did just then was petty, and I could not believe her. She got mad and said that she was naming our son the name I wanted, and then threw me out again. Am I the a-hole for going away to collect my emotions and feeling I'm entitled to my kids? Now for the comments. If this is real, you're the a-hole for so many reasons. Financially, you said you would be better off with just the one child you already had. Yet you chose to bow to pressure from family to try and have a boy. And what makes you the biggest a-hole of all is walking out on your wife at a critical moment when you thought the second twin would be a girl. What concerns me most is how you will now treat those children. I'm sure your girls will not even realize they have a father. Not to mention, Opie, you know that it's your sperm that determines boy or girl, right? And unless you go through medical procedures to conceive, you can't just try for a specific sex. Take a middle school biology class and grow up. You're the a-hole. I find it hard to believe you don't realize that. Your wife is giving birth, and you have a breakdown because it's a girl? Your wife is doing through childbirth, and all you care about is her family name and gender. I swear, if I were her, I wouldn't let you near the children, and I would name the boy something different. If this crap name is stressing you out, then don't put that pressure on the next generation. Again, you're a massive a-hole.